Hello, welcome to another case uh, of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Access to the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy is uh, free to resident and residents and trainees who are members of the DPA. Um, and membership in the DPA is also free for uh, residents and trainees. So uh, check that out. Uh, our case comes from the realm of GYN pathology. Uh, it's a 19-year-old woman who has uh, had pelvic pain and a pelvic mass has been noted on exam. So that's always concerning. Uh, but what are the things do we think about with a pelvic mass in a young woman? Well, neoplasms, of course, uh, especially in an oncologic center like ours, uh, come first to mind. And in young women, uh, we would be thinking more of the line of germ cell tumors or sex cord stromal tumors, maybe teratomas, and less likely any of the common epithelial tumors or other stromal uh, sarcomatous lesions and so forth. Um, of course, endometriosis is a concern, um, and uh, those can present as cystic lesions or other things, and particularly if there's an association with uh, menses. Uh, of course, in any sexually active woman, you need to be concerned about pregnancy or gestation-related lesions, uh, ectopic pregnancies, um, or uh, residua of those uh, types of dis, uh, processes. And then finally, uh, inflammatory disease also uh, comes into the consideration as uh, uh, both sexually transmitted and other inflammatory diseases can occur in these individuals. So uh, the patient underwent laparoscopy and uh, at that time it was noted that her tubes were quite enlarged. And here you see a cross-section of uh, sort of the mid-portion of her tube. Uh, we can see there's a bit of hemorrhage along the surface, so they certainly were kind of angry looking uh, uh, laparoscopically. Uh, but as we look at this at low power, we see that the general architecture of the tube is more or less preserved. Uh, we see here sort of the uh, hilus of the tube uh, with the vascular structures, and then here the uh, papillary architecture of the uh, 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 internal structures of the tube. Uh, of note is uh, areas of uh, blue cells and some uh, maybe bulbous uh, uh, enlargement of the uh, usually uh, delicate papillae of the uh, uh, salpingeal uh, conduit. Uh, and looking at this, it does appear that this uh, is represented by uh, inflammatory cells. Um, however, as we uh, notice uh, uh, in this case, the epithelial cells uh, are also rather uh, uh, jazzed up, uh, a little bit disoriented, and we see some intraepithelial inflammation here as well, uh, lymphocytes along in the uh, path uh, here. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this particular area. We see some uh, features of concern. Looking here uh, at this blue cell area back here near the Hylus, we can see that we have um, uh, dense uh, clusters of lymphocytes in sort of rounded nodular areas. We see some pallor that may suggest the possibility of a germinal center um, uh, and some vasculature associated with that. So uh, certainly lymphoid proliferations come to mind. Uh, however, even in this area, we see there is some epithelial component uh, and this epithelial component also uh, has uh, uh, some reactive characteristic perhaps to the epithelium and lots of intraepithelial and intraluminal uh, inflammatory cells. And as we can see, there's a mixture here of mononuclear cells and polymorphonuclear uh, cells here as well. So there's a mixture of acute and chronic inflammatory cells. Uh, so uh, with that appearance, um, and uh, looking here and seeing somewhat the patchy distribution of uh, some areas being more spared, other areas being more uh, dramatically enlarged in a sort of multifocal uh, pattern, again, with intraluminal inflammation, uh, I think we come to the conclusion uh, fairly easily that this is a uh, rather florid case of uh, pelvic inflammatory disease with marked uh, acute and chronic salpingitis. Now we can look around on the surface and see if we have endometriosis or things like that, 
but with the dominant uh, inflammatory process being intraluminal, uh, the, then this is a uh, most likely retrograde um, inflammatory process. Now, retrograde uh, inflammation obviously can be associated with uh, retrograde menses, with cervical stenosis or something like that, or with any of a variety of uh, both sexually and otherwise uh, transmitted uh, diseases. Um, to be specific, um, pelvic inflammatory disease has really a wide array of uh, both bacterial and uh, mycoplasma and other types of organisms that can cause this disorder. Uh, often, there are more than one uh, of these lesions that are involved. So uh, seeing any of a variety of these uh, in the culture materials uh, would not be uncommon. Um, and patients may or may not have an abnormal discharge. They may or may not have pain with coitus. They may or may not have uh, other sorts of pains. But more often than not, there is some element of pain and discomfort that may even be back pain or pain with urination. Now, there are some special types of uh, chronic salpingitis, xanthomatous, uh, granulomatous, and even sort of malacoplachia type of uh, patterns uh, can be seen. And as we saw with our case, the, the lesion can be large enough that it begins to simulate or mimic um, neoplasia. Um, certainly, uh, this degree of inflammation, if left untreated, uh, can lead, lead to uh, stenosis, uh, to difficulties with uh, um, uh, becoming pregnant, uh, and other uh, sorts of uh, pelvic chronic problems uh, as well as tubovarian abscesses and so forth. So our final diagnosis for today's case is uh, pelvic inflammatory disease secondary to any of uh, several of those uh, uh, entities just mentioned. Um, and uh, treatment, of course, in this circumstance would usually involve antibiotics um, and uh, surgery if uh, needed. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, uh, very brief but uh, important uh, disorder, not a common one on the surgical pathology bench, but certainly one that one needs to be aware of and which can be confusing if uh, uh, never previously encountered. And our thanks uh, to our special guest artist, uh, Chelsea Zhang, uh, for sharing her uh, monocyte as oyster watercolor uh, with us today. So until next time, thanks for joining us.